you and Steve wrote an article called Natural Language and Natural Selection, arguing for language not only as not only the human mind having evolved the abstract reasoning necessary for language processing, but language itself being this evolved adaptation. What's the story behind that article, which remains, I should add, very impactful. And I, I just read it in a cognitive science seminar, and that's how we got in touch. It was published in 1990, a while ago, my very first publication. And Steve and I were, if I remember right, there was an article written by Massimo Piatelli Palmarini, who was a, he was a cognitive scientist of some note. He was at uh, IT at the time, and he was very critical of adaptationist accounts of language, drawing heavily on the work of Stephen Jay Gould and ideas of Noam Chomsky. And Steve and I got to talking about it, and we realized that we had a lot of respect for Massimo, but we disagreed with the article. So we would write a response, and the response got bigger and bigger. And soon it began to be a response to, on the one hand, people who said language couldn't evolve, needn't have evolved through natural selection because language, there's nothing special about language, just a general desire to communicate or general pattern recognition capacity. And on the other hand, people like Noam Chomsky, who think natural selection really plays a very little role in a theory of how the mind has evolved. So we wrote it up. We turned it into a BS article of behavioral and brain sciences and our a journal, which ironically enough, I now edit, and so I can't publish it anymore. And, uh, and so the article came in, had tons of commentaries, very heated ones. And Steve and I had a big Tuesday night event, which they don't have anymore, I don't think, where Massimo Peter Parmini and Stephen Jay Gould responded to us. And it was intellectually extremely interesting. And I was very, was very excited by those issues. I haven't returned to them for a while, but it was a delight thinking about them and it was a huge delight working with Steve. You mentioned there was a lot of commentary and maybe even controversy surrounding this article. And I remember a line in it, and it's, it said something like, in one sense, our goal is actually very boring. We're just trying to prove that like e almost every adaptation in every species is evolved. Human language is no different. In some way, that's our tone. If our tone was belligerent or bemused or whatever our tone was, it was because of that. If, if somebody had said, Say it says, they say it now, or they said it when we wrote the article, be down, evolves through natural selection. The proper response is ho-hum. Like, of course it has. Say more. Say, that's not very mm -hmm. interesting. Uh, of course, be down evolves evolved through natural selection. It's not a miracle. It's not, that's perfectly plausible. But if you say human language evolved through natural selection, I think that's very controversial. And I think it became controversial due to the strong influence of Certain views, I think now, the field has moved away from. What struck me, what often struck me as a bizarre rejection of natural selection as a form of explanation, a certain simple-minded view about the mind. Stephen Jay Gould often believes that one reason why we're so smart is because the brain's so big. Nobody believes that anymore. There, there has to be mm -hmm. specialized systems in the brain. And it gets caught up at the time and still does in the politics over evolutionary psychology and everything. Those were exciting times. I remember, like some people remember the 60s, or setting fire mm -hmm. to administrative buildings, wearing tie-dye, and Steve and I were doing the equivalent of that. It was, everybody had an opinion on that, and we were fighting some pretty major figures in the field, which Steve was entirely comfortable with, and I was utterly terrified. 